and introduce uh, my students. Uh, this is to tell you a little bit about the Moore Method Apprenticeship Program, but uh, since, since I'm only helping Dr. Judy Kennedy here administrate it, uh, that means the students know a lot more about it than, than we do. Uh, so I'll tell you just a tiny bit. First of all, this program is jointly funded by the Educational Advancement Foundation and Lamar University. They're 50-50 partners. Uh, it funds graduate scholarships and travel for the students that participate. Uh, it's very simple. Each student is assigned a mentor as they come into the program. And all mentees follow a very simple rotation. That is, semester one, they observe at least one more method course with their mentor. Their only duty is to observe. Uh, broke that rule instantly by having mine start grading. Uh, the second semester, they assist and co teach uh, the exact same course. I broke rule number two immediately because my mentee. Uh, was, was ready to go on to another course, so we didn't do the same course. Uh, then they teach the exact same course the third semester, except this time it's completely up to them, and we're simply overseeing them and observing them instead of them observing us. Uh, and then the fourth semester, they are on their own. And at Lamar, in truth, those third and fourth semester, they're on their own in more than one course, and they have the option of teaching both of them more method or, or only one of them. And we have travel for each student to attend at least one conference per year with their mentor so they can see what the mathematical world is, is really like. Hopefully by the second year they're master's students and they're working on a thesis and maybe presenting at the conference. Uh, but in the first year it's just to get comfortable observing regional MAA conferences or perhaps the joint meetings. With that said, I'm going to turn it over to Chris Sams, our first uh, mentee. All right, can you hear me? Um, my name is Chris Sams. Uh, I graduated with my bachelor's uh, from Lamar University in 2009. Um, after which, I went and taught at a public high school for two years. Um, I did enjoy the teaching, but um, I did face some unexpected adversity, and through some of the cutbacks, I wasn't sure if I was going to be reemployed. And the door had opened for me to attend the apprenticeship program, and so here I found myself um, with the master's program. Um, so, what is the Moore method? Um, I've been exposed to two types of Moore Method. Uh, one I call the Pure Moore Method. Pure Moore Method um, is for the highly theoretical math courses that you would think writing proofs with. Um, this is the type of Moore Method that I've been exposed to as a student. Um, in these classes, you're just given a set of notes, definitions, axioms. The students work on them outside of class. We come inside and we present. Now, with some of my professors, um, it was really nice because we took pictures of the board as the students did the work. So um, it's kind of hard to write down, especially if you haven't worked on all the problems outside of class and try to comprehend what's going on so fast. And so we actually took pictures of the board and posted online for thumbnails so that we actually had extra time to go back and look at it so that, that helped the student. Um, but And the modified more method, this is the course that I taught. And we taught statistics. My mentor was Dr. Kumar Doss from Lamar University. Um, and the modified part was instead of just using strictly a set of notes, um, we did use a book and we did lecture. It was a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. And we lectured on Monday, Wednesday and assigned homework problems for the students to work on. And on Friday, the students would come in and they would present the problems on the board. And he would pick two to three students to work the same problem. So you got to see different solutions, different approaches. And um, we call those Friday problems. The students got bonus, or not bonus, but we got credit for going to the board. The way we did the credit is however many Fridays we had. Um, if you did one presentation each Friday, you got 100. And that could replace one of your lowest test grades, or some percentage um, of, the pro of the Fridays that you presented. And um, we did two sections. We actually did one which we did modified, and one which we did just for traditional lecture. And we did see some difference, and I'll show you some of the uh, projects here later. Um, so here are some of the pros and cons of using the Moore method. Um, why use it? Uh, it really, really works. And the reason I say it really, really works, well, one, it worked for me because 
I had not been used to that. You may be used to some students having trouble struggling in the class and having to repeat it over and over again. So what's the problem? Is it the teacher or is it uh, the student that's going fast again? So let me stop it. All right. Um, <clears throat> but maybe it's just the approach. And so um, what we look at is, you know, when I took the more method class, I was one of those students that, you know, was used to being spoon fed, you know, didn't like the difference, and I kind of rebelled against it. Uh, it was kind of hard for me. I was like that lazy student, um, but I had really good professors, and it, it worked out for me. Um, and I really, I remember a lot that um, the first success when I was actually able to work a cruise on my own, um, it was, it felt so great, and students really loved that once they get that breakthrough. And when we taught this past semester, uh, we did our own course evaluations, and um, we asked what they thought of the Friday problems, you know, what would they change about the course, you know, if you were talking to another student about this course, what would you say? And most of them said the Friday problems really, really helped because they were able to clear up a lot of their questions, a lot of things that they didn't understand, and so that helped them out quite a bit. Um, some of the obstacles to overcome, if you're going to use a more method, um, there's three S's. One is speed. Traditional classes, you're used to teaching, you go structure, and um, you know you can move pretty quickly. With the, the more method, it takes a little bit more time to work some of these problems. You know, sometimes days, weeks, maybe, to crack some of the, the proofs and theorems. So uh, time is against you. You know, we don't like waiting on anything. You're in the fast food line, and you're kind of impatient if it takes too long to get your food. So speed is an issue because you only have so much time. Uh, sports is a problem. You know. We only use so much of our brain, and students can memorize all kinds of statistics, who won what Super Bowl, and who won this series, and um, you know, they never use that information, you know, it's just rote memorization, but with math, you have to memorize some theorems, definitions, and be able to apply them. And so that uh, cross kind of interferes with the learning and then success. Success doesn't come as quickly using the more method as it does in uh, just a traditional learning class, you know, you might work a problem out, you get that done, you move on to the next one. Versus the more method, you know, you may spend some time working on it, you may not quite get it, and you got to rework it and rework it, and so it could be kind of discouraging for students to have to, to go over a problem over and over again, but once they do get that success and they, they get going, it, it really helps. So those three things kind of deter uh, the more method, but moving on. Um, as I was saying, we did do an experiment with this, um, and I put alert at the top because you don't want to use this to draw conclusions. Um, any statistician would know you don't use one sample and then draw conclusions, but we did want to show you what we found. So, as I was mentioning, we had two types of classes. One was the more method, the modified more method, the T is for traditional, and you can see some of the statistics. Some of the statistics. Um, there was 37 in each class. Uh, the traditional was a Tuesday, a Monday, Wednesday class, and then the more method was a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And um, the traditional, we didn't do the Friday problems. They just strictly had lecture, they did homework, they had tests, and you can see some of the variation between the grades, and you can see the, the average 83 for the more method and 76 for the traditional. It's a little difference. Um, we told you not to draw conclusions, but we did. Um, <laughs> Uh, what we saw. Um, the difference in those two styles is about seven points. Um, if we were to do a confidence interval, uh, you can see that it goes from negative 0.2 maybe to 13. So since that interval contains zero, our conclusion would be that these two uh, methods are essentially the same. I'm going to pass again. Sorry. Let me go back. These two methods are the same, but we believe otherwise. So we want to continue looking into that to see if there actually is a difference from what we think. So what makes the more method work? Well, I said two things. Either you have to have the right student. Um, this one's crazy, I can't point to her. She actually likes proofs. But um, I didn't, so either it takes the right student who actually loves doing it or the right professors, which I have been, um, had the privilege of working under. And any combination of these two things, you have yourself a successful recipe for more method. So in conclusion, um, what I wanted to say was Moore summed up his method in just 11 words, and I think you guys have seen this before. That student which is told the ta taught the best is told the least. And that's why I said that less is more. The less you give them, the more they learn.
And so I want to thank you, Dr. Toppin, Doss, Kennedy, and Mahavu. These are our mentors who help us with the program. Lamar. What's going on? Okay. Um, so this is the, the end of my section, but I wanted to thank them for our funding and you know for taking out the time because it's already a lot, you know, to just teach, but actually having a mentor to help us uh, takes a lot. So I want to thank those guys. Any more questions? Any questions for you? So if we don't have any questions for the speaker, I'll say first there's a five minute break. Do we have a question? Okay, will you take many more classes of this method? Would I work would I recommend more? Would you be taking more more classes? Yes, yes, I have been taking some classes um, with more method. Um, when I kind I re-entered graduate school, I took real variables under Dr. Kennedy. So I have been continuing to take some of those classes as well as I'll be teaching a couple coming up this semester. And in the fall, you'll have the biology and modern algebra. Yeah, very good. That's great. Can I be a student at your place? <laughs> <laughs> we, we would love to have you. <laughs> Other questions for the speaker? Then there's a five minute break before the next one officially starts. Uh, and, 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 and so I'll say two things. One, one uh, the next two students will speak after the break. And second, I'll say that uh, this is what happens when the students do a wonderful job of pre preparing a presentation, then they give it to me to glue together. I somehow glued it together and animated it so it doesn't stop. So that was my mistake, not my students. I originally tried to time rehearse it so that it would advance without me having to click, and then I started to abandon that. But, uh, I apparently got it back on. in there. <laughs> I could put it here then. All right, thank you. So this is uh, uh, Kimberly Westbury, our second mentee. Hi, I'm Kim Westbury. Um, I graduated from Lamar University in December of 2008 with a Bachelor's of Arts in Math, so that means I'm certified to teach high school math. Um, I taught at a high school for a year and a half, realized I really didn't like high schoolers, and I didn't, real, I didn't like how public schools were ran, so I quit. And um, after exchanging some emails with Dr. Behavior, I returned from grad school in August 2011. He was telling me about the Moore Method apprenticeship program. It sounded really interesting. I had some Moore Method classes as an undergrad, and I really liked how those were taught. So I thought this would be an interesting way to learn a new method of teaching from some great teachers. So some of the classes I had um, as an undergrad were Introduction to Advanced Math, higher geometry, problem solving, modern algebra one, and analysis. And then as a graduate student, I had real variables. And then this fall, I'm also going to have topology and what was the other one? Modern, another modern algebra class. So, that's it for my background. Okay. So, starting off in the fall, I was paired up with Dr. Poppin to learn about the Calculus One classes. So I was assisting and eventually co-taught a Calculus One class. It was, it was fun. It was a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, well Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday class. Um, it was mostly lecture, but there were opportunities for the students to come up and work some of the things on the board. It wasn't required though. So some things I learned through observing co-teaching Calculus One. Pay attention to your classroom dynamics. I know one of our classes was pretty low on the algebra skills, so we'd have to work slower through some of the problems to make sure that they understood how we got to our answer. There are several times that we've had to stop and explain, like getting common denominators, things like that. So pay attention to classroom dynamics. Another thing that Dr. Coffin talked a lot about was the zone of proximal development, which I think a lot of the teaching classes refer to that as scaffolding. How much information you should give the students without just handing it to them on the silver platter. So they should work for it a little bit. But pay attention to how much your student knows. 
So if they're way down here, don't try to give them a level that's up here. What I really liked about our class was that we showed students how to derive formulas. And um, that also answered some of the questions for students on why do we use this formula? So I like doing that with them. So an example of those would be we show them how to derive the derivatives for arc tangent, arc sine and arc cosine. So we'd work one of those with them. Then the next one did help us work through it. They'd tell us what to do on it. And then the third one, we'd give them for homework to do on their own. So it might be homework or it might even have been a bonus problem. And I also like that since they're learning how to derive the formulas, if they forget that formula later on, they might be able to just kind of go off to the side and kind of re-drive it for themselves. I've done that before on a few formulas. So that's helped me some. I also like that Dr. Coffin usually didn't plan too far ahead. Okay, he'll set goals for, okay, I want to be to this point in the semester on this chapter. But not necessarily plan, okay, I'm going to do this, 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 this on these days. Because like what Dr. Coffin always says, it's always going to go wrong in the classroom. Something's going to go wrong and it'll mess up your entire plan for the semester and you have to replan everything in it. So, I know some people can stay on track. I've never been able to. Okay, some of my plans for the next semester. I like that students present solutions to the peers, explain how they work it. So I'd, I'll probably put that as a requirement for the class, but it does a certain percentage of their final grade. Because I know some students learn better whenever, they're, whenever they have other people telling them how to do it instead of me. Because I might explain it one way, but then someone else come along and explain it to them a different way and it just clicks. Okay, and I love it whenever students active, actively participate in lessons. I'm not fond of quiet classrooms. They kind of freak me out a little bit. It's too quiet for me. So I like it whenever students tell me, okay, we need to do this, this, this. And it also shows me that they're paying attention. If students are just writing notes off the board, then they're probably going to miss something that you say. Like if you put a wrong example on the board, and they miss that you said it was a wrong example, and they're going through the notes like, ooh, what's this? So that's what I like for them to be active. And I would probably like to do monthly testing. For Dr. Coppin's class, there were three tests and then a comprehensive final. I'd probably like to make it to where it was almost monthly testing, to where they know, okay, every such weeks we're going to have a test. I like breaking up into smaller chunks, <coughs> and then they're not trying to worry about trying to get 10 concepts just for that one test, like maybe for a midterm, if you just did midterm and finals. I know for me, I usually do horrible on first tests, and so that freaks me out whenever I get like a 40 or something like that on the first test, and then there's only that one other test left. So if you get, I don't know, if I say 80, that's still not a very good average. So if you break it up to where you have several tests, that gives them the opportunity to raise their grades each time. So that's, that's just my opinion. That's about it for me. Any questions for me? Any questions for me? <coughs> what was your your calculus experience like as a student compared to this? Well, I also had Dr. Coffin for my calculus teacher. Unless you're talking about my high school experience, that that doesn't count. <laughs> I, had a, I had a coach. Yeah. It Did, didn't work out well. I think if we made it maybe through two, three chapters the whole year. But no, Dr. Coffin was an excellent professor whenever I had him as an undergrad. All right, thank you for speaking. Okay, hi, I'm Brittany Comer. Um, I am a graduate student at the Lord University.
faculty and obviously a part of the Moore Method Apprenticeship Program as well. Um, I didn't actually start my collegiate career at Lamar. Um, I transferred um, from a different university and actually changed my major three times before I settled on a math degree. Um, and so I really did start late in the game. Uh, in the game, I only got to take one like legit more method course as an undergraduate. I took analysis from Dr. Mahager, and I loved it. I loved the way the course was taught, and um, <coughs> love Dr. Mahager. He's awesome. But um, it had taken me like five and a half years to get to that point to finish my bachelor's degree. So I was done. I quit. Um, sorry, I didn't quit. I graduated. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, I graduated uh, from Lamar, got my BA um, in 09, and I actually went on to teach high school, um, like all of us have. And um, it was it was really difficult. I never wanted to teach high school. Um, it was just one of those. All right, I graduated. I need a job. I have student loans, and um, I had never taken any <coughs> education course. I'd never done any student teaching or anything like that. And they hired me mid semester. Um, and just threw me into a classroom and I had no experience whatsoever. Um, it was very challenging, especially I was 23 years old at the time and I was teaching juniors, 11th graders. And um, after overcoming some of the initial issues, um, I developed a really good rapport with my students and started to really love my job. I liked teaching. Um, I liked dealing with students and um, especially the course that I taught was um, for students that weren't very upper level, I don't know how to say that nicely, um, <laughs> it was a very lower level course. Um, and I was dealing with students that had struggled with math their whole um, educational career. I suppose a good way to say that. And um, But I loved working with them and watching them struggle so hard and work so hard and finally get a concept. You know, I, I just I loved that little light bulb effect. Um, but the issue that I found with teaching high school is that I wasn't really teaching them anything because after a couple weeks of starting a new concept, they wouldn't know what I was talking about when I tried to refresh their memory or review something. Um, so about that time, I started receiving emails from Dr. Mahavier and Dr. Kennedy in regards to the Moore Method Apprenticeship Program and coming back to grad school. Um, so it was kind of perfect timing. Um, I debated it for a while. Because in order to go back to graduate school, I was going to have to quit my job. And in the economy right now, it's kind of ludicrous to quit a good job. Um, but I did. And um, I enrolled at Lamar in, um, for grad school in the fall of 2011. And um, I'm actually Dr. Hager's mentee. She's the one breaking all the rules over there. But um, I, <laughs> my first semester, I had uh, sat through Cal 1 with Dr. Mahavier, and um, first and foremost, my role in class was to observe how the Moore Method um, process went, I suppose, because I'd only taken one course, and so I was fairly um, new to the idea. Um, but on top of that, I also would walk around and individually help different students. And um, the biggest challenge that I found was in high school, you know, basically, the way things usually go is you just kind of hand them the answer. And um, that's definitely not how the Moore method is supposed to go. And so walking around individually helping people, um, when they'd ask me a question, my first response would be, you know, oh, this is the answer. And um, it was very challenging for me to not do that. And through watching Dr. Mahavier, um, I'm definitely not pro at it, but I've gotten um, a good bit better at it, I believe. Um, Towards the end of the semester, I actually started, um, every once in a while I would teach the class, or not teach the class, but conduct the class. And another challenge that came up was going from just dealing with one student, and through the semester you realize what level that student's on and how much information you should be able to give them, um, so where you're not giving them the answer, but you're not um, discouraging them either by talking over their head. Whenever you're in front of a, um, class with 40 some odd students, I believe is what we had in our calculus class. Um, it's a bit more challenging. We would do uh, like mini lectures, I suppose, every once in a while just to jump start them in the right direction. And, um, you know, 
you have a class um, of income and freshmen usually, and there is a big span between their levels. Some students are much lower than other ones, and so again, trying to find that level to where you're not hindering upper level um, students by giving them too much in information, but again, not discouraging the lower level students. Um, in second semester, uh, this past semester, I would teach um, or conduct class every, uh, every Friday. And another issue that came up was determining um, the most beneficial route for each day. Um, in a more method class, much different from a traditional lecture course. In a lecture course, you walk in, you have your lecture, you know what you're going to do, and you do it, and you walk out, and you're done. In a more method course, though, you never really know what's going to happen that day. You can walk in, and everybody has something to present, and everybody presents, and you go, um, you, you know, talk about the problems or whatever. But if people don't have things to present, then you have to decide, okay, we'll do, I feel like they have enough information to actually do the problems that we covered, or, um, you know, and they're ready to go on to the next lesson, or should we go back and, and try to work some examples or something to kickstart them on the information they should know about. Um, in the fall, I will be on my own and going back to Cal 1, we did Cal 2 this past semester, I'm going to go back to Cal 1 and also I'm going to be teaching trigonometry. Um, in trig, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to go with the regular lecture route uh, because I am a full-time student as well and um, that's going to be a lot of stuff on my plate. But uh, Cal 1, I will definitely try to do, um, probably not a pure more method course, um, I'm going to do what I call half and half. It is a four hour course and it will be taught four days a week and um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, maybe something like that. And I think the first two days that I will do um, some sort of lecture and the last two days actually have them present. That's what I'm thinking right now. It'll probably change in a month or so. Um, other than that, I get asked the question probably four times a week as to what I'm going to do after I graduate with my master's and um, that seems to be the million dollar question. I have no reason to clue. I know I could go off um, to work on my PhD, I could go into industry and try and make some money, um, but I really don't have the slightest clue as to what I want to do or what I will do. Um, but I am beginning my thesis with Dr. Mahavir, so we'll see where that takes me. Um, but other than that, I've enjoyed uh, this opportunity so much. I love working with Dr. Mahavir and Dr. Kennedy um, at Lamar and more Method program is wonderful and I just really appreciate the opportunity very much. Thank you.